A very good evening to our viewers from VC World, which is the venture capital community of PW Business World. We have with us today Gaurav Singh, co-founder of London-based VC firm JPIN. Prior to joining JPIN, Gaurav has held leadership positions, driving global teams at Nine Unicorns Global Fund, Refinitiv, and Thomson Reuters. With over 10 years of experience, Gaurav is a seasoned angel investor and a startup mentor, scaling companies across a wide array of sectors. He has recently been awarded the ESG Impact Award 2022 uh, for the empowerment of rural communities by the Confederation of Empowerment Initiatives. Thank you so much for joining today, Gaurav. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Anisha. Thank you. Uh, I'll be starting with the first question. Uh, you were the global head at Thomson Reuters for over 10 years. So what, what made you change uh, your, uh, uh, your previous profession to now becoming an, an investor? And could you tell us a little bit about how the initial years at JPEN was like? Uh, yes, certainly. So again, I think uh, the opportunity at at, um, at Thomson Reuters and other businesses uh, uh, was generally from an engagement perspective to be able to help scale them. Uh, you know, JPN has been around since 2010 and has been a thought leadership forum uh, and advising family offices. So we have been investing uh, for quite a long time. We've um, uh, uh, been the first guys who actually started uh, supporting the UK India startup ecosystem uh, with the first official VC. Uh, we've invested our own capital across numerous startups, uh, uh, both Nayan and I when we founded JP in 2010. Um, and uh, the intention uh, as a transition, so it's, it's been a parallel, uh, you know, because everyone is an investor, but they just have to take the leap, right? So we took the leap quite early. I think we only, uh, it's around, I think 20, uh, around 2018, 2019 is when we um, uh, got into the VC capacity to be able to start making investments. Uh, and it's, it's great. Uh, you know, it's a very thrilling one. Uh, innovation and acceleration is, is what will shape the world. But finding what will truly be successful and what will fail, you know, is that 1% rather than, you know, going after trying to invest into anything and expecting miracles. You know, that is where the life teaches you lessons. And uh, and we've had that, those lessons, I think, over the last 10 years generally. So our VC journey, our, our big ticket investment journey was actually quite smooth. Uh, and, you know, we've not had failures, you know, fortunately. Last year, we made 40 investments and, you know, fortunately, all are doing well. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think it's a lot of a decade of learning that has come into uh, good investing. So uh, I believe the global fund, uh, from the global fund, around 20 million has been currently uh, been deployed in India. Uh, so could you possibly give us an understanding of what kind of companies are on your radar and what sectors are you focusing on? Uh, yes, so so the, the 150 million corpus is split in two parts. Uh, 20 million is split in uh, supporting micro SMEs. Um, and or medium stage uh, uh, businesses. And these are businesses which have a typical four to six million top line. Uh, if you see the strategy that we are, so we advise family offices and investors as a single advisor across different asset classes, right? Now, uh, micro SMEs are stable businesses um, which have good top line, have huge growth potential. Uh, but people, many traditional investors who are taking the leap into these investments still love the touch and feel, still love cash flows, right? So that is a, a 20 million diversification. Um, and we will make between half a million to 1.5 million uh, investment into MSMEs in India. This is a SEBI uh, uh, regulated uh, CAT uh, 1 um, AIF. And on the 130 million corpus, that is... Uh, predominantly for pre-Series A onwards, uh, global giant opportunities, uh, focusing on emerging markets. So while 120 million is just for India, the other 130 million is for emerging markets across um, uh, Asia. So India predominantly because it is the most stable established of the emerging markets. Uh, then Vietnam, uh, Nigeria and Colombia. Technologies can come from anywhere. But for us, uh, huge growth will come from emerging markets. We want to provide that access to these businesses, which are truly solving the impact needs of the world. 
I, and what I, I I mean by that is, if you look at India as a 1.4 billion population, 400 million are quite saturated. You know, they have access to tech. They have five food apps. We are trying to say why the sixth one is amazing. But if you look at the 1 billion population who is hungry for modernization, upliftment, education, security, better financial, if someone is truly focusing on solving that problem, this is an audience that will grab it with both hands, right? Now, if you see globally, out of the 8 billion population, 2 billion are saturated. 6 billion are hungry for upliftment. And though, and A, it is a collective noble cause that we have uh, to fulfill this together. But also, if you see how we get entrepreneurs to see this impact audience is that this is an audience which is hungry. This is an audience that can take you viral. And it's an endless pool of new customers, right, who you can service and uplift their lives. So they are going to be more loyal than other customers who are used to flipping apps and technologies every three months, six months, 12 months, right? So that is the perspective and, you know, that will create global giants in emerging markets. So from this um, global corpus and the Indian corpus, how many investments are you uh, looking at making in this year? So again, um, in this year from the India uh, MSME focus, we'll make, I think about three to four investments. Um, in total, we want to have between seven to 10 investments. It's a small 20 million corpus. The subsequent one is already being planned at 200 million. Uh, in India for MSMEs. Um, in the global uh, 130 million, where an average ticket is going to be 250k to a million in the first round and up to 5 million in the second round, uh, we want to make around 10 investments this year. The and 40 investments fun? in total generally, and then we'll follow on. Sorry, please. And is this, uh, uh, is this uh, fun looking at investing in any specific sector of the uh, MSMEs? So, uh, no, again, I think sector agnostic, uh, whichever is um, focusing on uh, growing uh, at a crazy pace. Of course, uh, blue ocean economy uh, is, is, is going to be huge. You know, that's where trillions are going to be generated. Anything that supports the service um, uh, commodities uh, market, uh, goods, education, um, manufacturing, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, technology. Uh, related activity, manufacturing, supply chain. But whatever it is that has huge ongoing increasing global demand, but is also MSMEs have the benefit that they're easier to exit as well because you can easily list them on one of these exchanges and liquidate, you know, provide liquidity to, to, to clients. So whatever provides us that cusp of huge returns, but ever increasing demand. And India is flourishing in so many sectors. On the on the emerging markets, global uh, 130 million fund, again, truly servicing the 6 billion, 1 billion and 6 billion global impact audience. Um, uh, Blue Ocean, we are, we are going quite big on. Uh, EdTech, uh, technology, service, logistics. Um, uh, space techs will, deep tech, space tech will again uh, form a part. But we're not after... Um, sectors which will produce unicorns. Uh, we are after sectors and businesses which will produce decacons of tomorrow, global giants. Uh, and we can take them to multiple countries. So those are the sectors that will after be pretty open. Why did you choose to allocate a fund for the Indian market? Like uh, what, was, what was the decision that uh, drove you to allocate a specific segment from the global fund on the Indian market? So um, uh, firstly, again, you know, we, we have... We're Indian, we have strong Indian roots, right? Um, and uh, Bharat is rising at a crazy pace. Uh, MSME has been hot on the agenda and, you know, we've been planning this about, for about four years. Uh, so uh, that is a market that will attract a lot of international capital, a lot of local capital. Uh, and so for us, uh, you know, and we want to give people, global audiences, um, a foot into India with a stable investment ecosystem. So they have been investing with us in startups. Um, MSMEs, you know, as I said, they're four to six million top lines. So they know what they're doing. People are very comfortable. And in their growth journey, um, they will attract a lot of capital. Foreign investors want to participate into the Bharat growth story, but they don't know how. They need a starting point. It is still very exotic for them, intimidating uh, for them. And this is a very... 
a quick segue for them to be able to participate in the journey but these investors who are coming in are are only participating because um uh, to the businesses that we'll invest in but they will come in in a very big way into the 200 million fund that we subsequently want to launch um on the msme side of india jpen has been invest investing from early to like other uh, mature levels of uh, investment rounds uh, could you possibly tell us a little bit about the exit strategies or the recent exits made by uh, jpen uh, yes so um, we have uh, you know again across uh, our portfolio you know we've enabled a lot of uh, past uh, you know again uh, very successful um, incubators uh, and accelerators globally so you know there's been between 40 to 50 exits uh you know where we've come in early or come quite late you know ranging anywhere from a, a 2x going up to you know 250x essentially um the intention from our perspective um startups and entrepreneurs more than startups entrepreneurs fail because a they find a lot of time wasted in the journey right and when they are see there are only four aces in a pack of cards but you have to go through the 48 to find those four aces right we spent a decade in finding the aces who are good positive energy that is a very important factor the second factor why start, why entrepreneurs fail is they are desperate for capital and if you imagine there are people who come in at a seed stage they bring capital at a seed stage some bring capital between series a to b some then bring from c to d some bring from 100 million plus some at ipo for an entrepreneur they're not talking to each other right and it is very hard to find the right people and then different people don't like different investors so the kind of headaches that entrepreneurs get they should be focusing on growing the business right and also there's a lot of negative energy that is introduced to startups so now when an entrepreneur startup or an msme when they are fighting hard to grow the business you can either put a layer underneath them to push them upwards or put a negative layer onto them with bad capital which will push them down we are the guys who bring the right capital to bring it up but with the view that when we come in early uh we do it with a view that you know as i said you know we invested made 40 investments last year we were the most active investor between uk and india we are uh, the flagship investor between uk and india uh, backed by the british government as well and the indian governments in really fueling up the ecosystems but when we invested in early stages then we brought subsequent capital from top billionaires around the world who are good people who are good mentors who we trust we know they are good intent and these are the people who will though they participated because it's a jpn opportunity they participated in a seed or a series a stage but these are the people who will then write a 50 to 100 million check so we are trying to get them early in the round so they can guide the founders they can open the right access help create the right global mindset so that it is ready to consume the 100 200 million and deals that we have come in at an early stage we are now the several of our uh, uh, portfolio which we are raising 100 200 million 300 million rounds for them uh, and then you know some we are also talking about an ipo but then we can guide them uh, from a very early stage on how to become global giants no one has the expertise globally if you see different people come at different stages there is literally no one no investment banker who will come at an early stage and go with you till ipo this is not a single person not a single professional entity that i know and I've, we've been at this space for about 12 years now so we are disrupting the space of creating global giants bringing the right positive energy positive capital mentorship from early till global giants it just means that what we have done with that is we've mitigated geopolitical risk for people you know people can be absolutely amazing in one country which is india or africa or, or you know the colombia nigeria in the uk but when one of the top investors comes and in, comes into that space you know that msme or a startup is dead right if they are if we are able to launch them in 2 3 4 5 6 different countries right the intention is very simple that we are helping mitigate that geopolitical risk by the strategic investors from different countries yeah and that allows it to be ready to capital see you cannot rush after capital you have to let your proposition be so strong and so risk mitigated that the capital comes to you that is a, the approach that we bring to an ecosystem to create more trust in the credibility and stability 
there's enough money that will keep on flowing money has to be invested it never sits still right it just goes towards the most risk mitigated opportunities do you think indian tech companies today of course we know that they've been uh, scaling at a very rapid pace especially post the pandemic and lost so many companies have been, uh, like reached the unicorn stage in india uh, but what is your what is your thoughts on making these companies go global do you think these companies have the potential uh, tech companies especially have the potential to go global uh, yes they do um, but i think the challenge is that you know we often um, you know uh, talk to businesses which are half a billion up to 2 billion uh, in india and they're looking to go global see the challenge is that if you don't and this is the differentiation that jpn brings is because we have global access we are opening our offices across nigeria we already have offices across india and the uk we are opening our offices across nigeria colombia vietnam uh, switzerland uh, uae uh, israel because a lot of capital will flow and a lot of emerging markets access we will provide from our own offices so there is no time wasted and everything is trusted but the challenge with large businesses is that they are of a certain mindset they have big investors uh and it is very difficult for them to attract other large people in a country because see if you see the intent of joint ventures most joint ventures end up failing whatever the industry because there are two giants who bring egos and trying to make it successful it doesn't happen but if you shape that early if you bring these heavy giants from different countries top five families from different potential markets early into the round who are good people who've grown with you they trust you that is when it's easier for you to know while you're preparing your growth journey what will work in colombia uh, latin america what will work in south america so in south america what will work in africa what will work in other asian markets it has to be nurtured early a lot of unicorns uh, are open to it but they also have they're burning a lot of money right and and uh, and there's not you know supply is stopping now so while they are now focusing on organizing the house they don't have the bandwidth to be able to go to different markets because if they now have to go in different markets they have to go big why go big when you can do it piece by piece when you are a little earlier in your journey right there's enough money and lot of local people if you go into nigeria there's enough money in africa in nigeria to invest into local ventures provided they come in a little early in their stage not when they're large because then you know uh, things don't work out of of now speaking a little bit about the uk fund um i saw that uh, the the uk fund has allocated a lot of its investments in the fintech sector of india so could you possibly tell us a little bit about why uh, the invest the investors chose to invest in that sector and what potential growth do you see in um yes again i think see um emerging markets um common theme is 80 20 whatever works in india essentially uh, 80% it will apply as it is 20% tweaking across south america africa and other asian markets um most emerging markets are heavily unbanked they still cash uh, technology still hasn't stepped in so that spread hasn't gone and uh, then if you talk about you know one of the businesses we backed was credit enable uh, you know uh, indian founders um a uh, uk uh, you know venture has great roots into india um and they were they brought this ai um for sme loan applications where rather than taking 6 months for smes to get an application because they need money now it used to get results in you know between a few hours to a couple of days right so, to support the msme sector which is supporting a lot of jobs Uh, then you look at a lot of um, um, inclusion financial inclusion so we invested in a business called the social loan company in india is known as kashi yeah and you know doing really well and they focused on the the um, you know the the professionals and the young audience because in all honesty that audience has the right moral values you know uh, they are not there to cheat because sibil a lot of these things are coming in so so but no one is lending to them so in short tech will again be a fintech that will play a big part in providing them security so these are the kind of things a huge market but again as i said whatever works for that 1 billion in india right it is bound to be successful because it is a, a noble cause right that is what we need to focus on and that is an audience which will consume your product so much that you will just grow and grow so why not go after something that will helping others and it's it's a booming industry 
So in the UK, other than fintech, is the fund looking at uh, focusing on any other sector? Uh, in the UK, absolutely. Again, uh, EV, clean tech is huge here. Um, again, autonomous, uh, you know, deep tech, um, uh, blue ocean, uh, a lot of engineering happening here. Um, uh, health, health tech, med tech, um, again, very big. Uh, Agri tech technology, I think, less so uh, in the UK, but again, I think a um, lot of technology, a lot of you know, across uh, Europe, there's a lot of innovation happening in agri tech. Uh, but again, as we said, you know, we are pretty sector agnostic. Technologies can come from anywhere, provided they are they truly can service the six billion orders globally. So pretty agnostic. The fund has also been very actively participating in providing strategic advisory to its investees. So could you possibly tell us how is it participating in assisting the company in assisting its portfolio companies in its expansion and other advisory roles? So so we um, we are not financial investors. You know we are very strategic in our nature, and we make it very transparent. If we are the smallest, or you know we don't have a role, and there are a lot of you know, big wigs already there, then you know we might not get the the ability to bring the the the, the hard work that we want to right. So. Uh, but generally, what I mean by that is that when we shape a business, if you see, in a lot of founders will come and show you all these amazing people who are on their deck. The first question I ask is, well, how many of them have invested a penny in your business? And then the answer is almost nil. Now, if you imagine that when we get up in the morning, you know, we think of family, we think of our investments, and we think of people who've invested in us. Imagine the people who are on your deck, but they're just there for face value. When you have to ask for help, they will. you have to call them 50 times to possibly get through to them and then they'll be busy. But if they have invested, so what we do is we bring in the right, we only invest in a business after a lot of scrutiny. We come with the notion that we possibly will not invest into the business unless everything checks out. Last year, we evaluated 5,000 deals coming from all over the world, best accelerators, best investors, super successful VCs, but we only invested in 40 transactions, right? So with a very simple view that can we bring the best of mentors globally into the business who are also hungry to create value and wealth? Will these mentors invest their money? Can we bring in strategic investors who will write the checks now, but write, help them grow in different countries or be their clients? Unless, you know, uh, unless it is, it doesn't have the right kind of, as I said, you know, you, you provide the right support structure. These are the people who have to be far better than the founders, well out of their league, but good people. And then they will see, this is the culture that, you know, if it's good people who are far better than you, they will pull you up, right? They'll, they'll safeguard you. That is the muscle around you as well, which saves you from trouble, right? Um, we know that ecosystem. We build that ecosystem. We are backed on our captable by the best of names in the world, top families around the world, right? So, and and it is that trust. Startups struggle, businesses struggle to offer trust to the industry. We bring those people with trust, with good positive energy. That leverages a strategic growth across different fund st stages, across different clientele, across different sectors, across different markets. That is what's going to make it successful. A fundraise is not going to make someone successful. What's going to make successful is, are they going to be huge in India, in Vietnam, in Colombia, in Nigeria, right? That is when the revenues are coming in, when the different consumers are there. So if we have that end goal and our vision is that 10 billion, can they achieve a 10 billion play? Who reaches that is different. Who sells out first? You know, that's immaterial. But do they have the potential and what do we need to do to be able to help them achieve that 10 billion strategy. It is, as I always tell people, 60% strategic, 40% financial capital. But people go after 100% financial capital, 0% strategic. With that, I'll be asking my final question. Uh, so what is what is the roadmap for JPIN in the next three to five years to come? Can you give us an understanding of it? So we are um, on track. So we are already leaders between UK and India. We're on track, uh, and UK, India, if you imagine, uh, four ecosystems only in the world, uh, US, China, which have delivered unicorns, but are, of course, uh, saturated and declining. Uh, UK and India are the third and the fourth 
in no particular order uh, of a, a ecosystem that have delivered a hundred unicorns, right? Uh, but the reason we are here because we UK is all about trust. UK is the biggest distribution of capital in the world. And it is wants to pump in, you know, and 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 we're hoping that we'll bring almost 100 billion into India over the next decade um, to pump uh, fuel the market. But our vision is to become the world's most trusted startup investment bank. And when I say startup, it is early stage, could be MSMEs, could be startups. Uh, so that with a very simple view that if you see global top thousand, uh, Indian and Jewish capital is the biggest in the world. Indian and Jewish intellect is the biggest in the world, but out of the top thousand Jewish companies are this much, Indian companies are handful in the top thousand. Our view is to be, if we are one fifth of the world's population, if not half of the world's intellect, we want to still have one fifth global giant in the top thousand. And JPN wants to be the biggest contributor in taking Indian companies global and becoming global giants, but it has to be done the right way. So trust, strategicness, but truly elevating Bharat to be ready to go global. You know, it is, and, and the single factor that Anisha that is missing is, unfortunately, people still think about me, my, myself, you know, rather than us. Collaborative, the Sangathan is a word that originated from India, but the Western world has truly adopted it. What we are trying to do is bring the right Sangathan to businesses, Sangathan to Bharat, to have the right global representation across geoeconomics, geopolitics, you know, decision making by bringing the right global giants to be in the top thousand. Only then we can truly open up Bharat's potential to the world. And that is hugely missing. And we are hoping that we're on that trajectory and we're hoping we'll uh, you know, do our part in taking Bharat global. Thank you so much for joining us today. As I, as I said, that the interview would be out both in uh, video and in print from Business World. Um, I'm sure the viewers are going to find this, uh, I mean, the, the entire video to be extremely insightful. So really looking forward to have you more with uh, more interviews with us in the uh, in whatever upcoming VC rounds that we are having. And VC World also keeps having masterclasses and interactions with many other venture capitalists. So we'll be very happy to have you with us. No, no, absolutely. Anisha, thank you so much. And, you know, we do all need to do a lot more to be able to, as I said, you know, take Bharat to the global thousand standing. Yes, absolutely. I think it's it's actually a really great time. Like I keep interacting with a lot of VCs from India and everybody does with the same thing. But now is the best time to start up. Um, and uh, it's extremely exciting and very motivating to also see that global funds are now so proactively um, working in India as well, um, assisting uh, startups from India to go, go global and also scale within the ca country as well. So uh, very wonderful chatting with you today. Uh, I'm also um, looking at, uh, I mean, uh, Business World's London uh, base right now because I'll be moving uh, to London in the next uh, two weeks' time. Oh, so, amazing. Uh, Welcome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so really looking forward to go there and start my uh, network there. I'm going there actually to pursue my LLM and along with that, I'll, I'll be also working uh, with uh, Business World. So yeah, yes. definitely looking forward to be uh, in, in the city very soon. No, absolutely. Nisha, it's an absolute pleasure. And, you know, absolutely, let's... Uh, uh, you know, bring the ecosystem to the next level together. Yes, absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Have a great day. Thank you.